going to walk through an example of conducting a one-way between groups analysis of variance using JASP. In this particular scenario, I want to know if the exam scores of students who had Professor A, Professor B, and Professor C are different. Here in Excel, I've entered all of the data. I have one column with the section and one column with the exam scores. The first thing I need to do in order to get these data into JASP is to save this as a CSV. So I'll go to File, Save As. I'll just put this on my desktop. And for Save As Type, change it to CSV, comma, delimited. Now I can open JASP. And from within JASP, open that data file that I just saved. We can see that when it imported, it imported section as a nominal level variable, which is correct, and exam score as scale, which is correct. So we're going to use this data set to walk through the six-step hypothesis testing procedure. Step one, identify the populations, distribution, and assumptions. There are three populations that we're comparing. Those would be all students who've ever had Professor A, all students who've ever had Professor B, and all students who've ever had Professor C. Since we're comparing three groups, our comparison distribution is going to be an F distribution. We have three assumptions. The first is that the sample is random. Um, in this particular case, it's not a random sample, but I would say that it's a representative sample, which is often as close as we're going to get. So because we have a representative sample, I'm going to say that this assumption has been satisfied. Second, either the samples need to be normally distributed or the sample sizes need to be at least 30. I'll tell you in this particular scenario, the sample sizes are less than 30, so we will need to check that the samples are approximately normally distributed. I'll do this by going to descriptives, descriptive statistics, and I want to look at exam scores split by section. Under plots, distribution plots will give us a histogram for each section. Looking at the histogram of exam scores for Professor A's section, what we're looking for here is that the distribution is not extremely skewed in either direction and that there's no extreme outliers. So as long as this is approximately normally distributed, we're okay to use the F distribution and the ANOVA test. So Professor A, I would say, is close enough to being approximately normally distributed it's not heavily skewed in either direction and no extreme outliers. Professor B, again, there might be a little bit of a skew here, but not enough that I would say that the assumption is violated. I would say that this is close enough to being approximately normally distributed that we can continue. And Professor C, also approximately normally distributed. Again, no extreme outliers. So we'll say that this assumption has been met and we can use the F test. The last assumption was that the sample variances are similar. If we scroll up in the descriptive statistics, we have all of the summary statistics for each professor's section separately. What we're looking at now are the sample standard deviations. As long as the largest sample standard deviation is not more than twice of the smallest, this assumption is met. So we're comparing the largest sample standard deviation, which is 5.942, to the smallest sample standard deviation of 5.317. The largest sample standard deviation is not more than twice of the smallest, so this assumption has been met. With all three assumptions met, that means that we can continue to conduct our analysis of variance using an F distribution. Step two is to write our null and research hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the three population means are all equal. The research hypothesis 
is that at least one pair of population means are not equal. That brings us to steps three, four, and five. So if we were doing this by hand, step three is where we would define characteristics of the comparison distribution, so that F distribution. Step four is where we would determine a critical value, and step five is where we would calculate the test statistic. Using JASP, these three steps are going to change a little bit because JASP is going to compute the degrees of freedom, it's going to compute the F test statistic, and it's also going to compute the p-value, which is the value that we're going to use then in step six. So looking at steps three, four, and five, if you're doing this using JASP, I would combine them all together and then just present the degrees of freedom, the F test statistic, and the p-value. So let's do that now. Under ANOVA, a uh, basic ANOVA is your one-way between groups ANOVA. Our dependent variable is exam scores and fixed factors is the independent variable of section. Here we have our ANOVA source table. So with two and 44 degrees of freedom, our F test statistic is 2.191 and our p-value is 0 0.124. When we get to step six then, we're going to make a decision and state a real-world conclusion. Our p-value is greater than the standard 0 0.05 alpha level or what your textbook calls p-level. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not evidence that there are any differences between the exam scores of students who have Professor A, Professor B, or Pro Professor C. So the results of our one-way ANOVA are not statistically significant. There is some debate over whether or not you should do post-hoc pairwise comparisons when your overall ANOVA is not statistically significant. Some folks will say, if your overall ANOVA is not statistically significant, you stop there. Others will say that you can or you should continue to go on and do those post hoc tests. So just for the sake of showing you how to do the post hoc test and how to interpret that, I will uh, run the two key post hoc comparisons here. So under post hoc test, we're doing a post hoc by section, the default, it's Tukey because he's the most popular of all of them. Uh, note though that there are other, other options here. We scroll down and what we're looking at here are all of the different possible pairs of independent groups that we have. So we have Professor A and Professor B, Professor A and Professor C, and Professor B and Professor C. So these are all of the possible pairs of those levels of the independent variable. The difference in means, so this would be, I think, Professor A minus Professor B, A minus C, and B minus C. The standard error of that difference, the t-test statistic, so this is like an independent means t-test that we saw last week, and what we're actually looking at here, or looking for here, is the p-value. Note that it has a little two key subscript. That tells us that this is adjusted to take into account the number of tests that we're conducting, right? If we were to just conduct three independent means t tests here and treat them totally independently, our actual alpha value would be inflated, right? That's why we conduct an ANOVA instead of just multiple independent means t tests. This two key p value takes into account that we're doing three simultaneous tests here. So it takes into account that we're doing three tests using the same set of data. So these p-values are adjusted for that. If a p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference between those two groups. In this case, all of our p-values are greater than the 0 0.05 alpha level, which means that there are no significant differences between any of these pairs of professors.
So to summarize our results, the overall one way between groups ANOVA was not statistically significant, and our two key pairwise comparisons also found no statistically significant pairwise differences.